Well, guess what? What's that? Another unboxing. Another unboxing? Of a Dietone product. What so we got? it's like the same as the last one because they all come with the same stuff. Well, we don't know. Let's check it out. Wow, they are screaming. Hey guys, Basil and Wolf from Grayson Hobby, and today, again, we have a new product from Dietone. Yet another Dietone. This is the GTM 2.5 series, so we have the 2.5 inch X frame, and they also make a 2.5 inch plus frame. So if you keep in score, they have an R90, which is about a two inch frame. They have an M2, which is a two inch frame. Now they have the new M2 and a half, and they have a three and a five. five. That's as of right today. So yeah, they got a lot of stuff going yep. out there. So today we're gonna show you, you're gonna go over the components, you're gonna go over the flight controller, motors, all that good stuff. We're going to do a comparison of which one you like. You've flown them all, right? At this point, yes. Yes, so we're gonna go over the conversion that Will likes, because I think I've flown one of these, two of these. I don't let them fly. Me. We're gonna uh, do some flying, and we're gonna go over the props, yep. and all that good stuff, and um, here it is. So there's two different, this is the M2.5 series, so you have your plus frame and the X frame. The components that come with them are going to be the same inside, but for just showing there's two different versions. So you'll take out the top part, you'll get the little yellow warning card, it tells you about the prop length, or the screw length and all that. Dietone sticker sheet, so that's in there. Okay. Now, yeah. we've already mentioned this, please read this. And should we read it out loud to the, everybody else? You're going to spend a hundred and something dollars in your quad. It's take five seconds to read that. All right, so basically in the bag, you get all kinds of goodies here. Um, this is your typical uh, Dietone stuff. You get bunch of zip ties. You get two Velcro straps that are horrible. Um, I don't ever use those. Nope. Prop screws, which got to be careful guys. If you do not run the factory prop, sometimes again, the props might be thinner than some of the other ones. So you got to be careful so okay. you don't kill your motor. You get an extra harness. This is for the Fury uh, V2. XT30 connector. All right. A couple extra flight stack than uh, the nylon screws. Set that out. See something there with a little, um, it's like a buzzer. All it's right. got a buzzer. So, the remove before washing. It doesn't mean after you crash your quad when you wash, wash it. it. <laughs> That's not what it means. Okay. A lot of people ask about this. Why does it say remove before washing? So, when electronics are made, they're either alcohol washed or um, I believe some of them are actually water washed, like distilled water. Um, when you get all that flux and all the chemicals on the boards and all that when they're assembled, they go through a wash process afterwards to clean the boards. And the buzzers, because they have a hollow cavity, when they get wa you know, they get washed, and then after they're washed, the boards are ready for production when you peel that off. Gotcha. So that's just so they don't get damaged in manufacturing of boards. Right. It's a generic part they're using. It's not necessarily, these are probably not alcohol washed. Right. We got an XT30 connector for your battery. Screws for the flight stack. This is two spare flight stack screws because people were saying they were breaking the nylons from hard crashes. So or I asked you to them. include that. Yep. And now they're there. Okay. And then you got the little, um, silicone jacket that goes on the bottom, the little battery anti-skid thing. And That's you got a, it. What's that for? It keeps the battery from sliding. Okay. Well, isn't that, that what a strap is for? Really? Oh, it comes oh, yeah. with gym fan. What size? 25, 40. Um, I think these are, are they Hokey 25, 40? I don't even know what they're actually called. Flash, I think. Flash, like yeah. Um, but 25, 40 and they come with clear. I did use blue in the video because I just wanted to have blue props. Right. And if you need extra props, we got a whole bunch of props, and that would be, what size? 2540 is the factory. Ah, 2540, right there. That is the ones that we'll use right there. Clear blue flash. All right, the buzzer. Is soldering required? No, the, the buzzer can be installed without soldering. It comes with a plug pre-installed. Uh, pre uh, you will have to mount the buzzer somewhere, probably tape it down or hot glue okay. or something. So no siren required. You plug it in and you turn on beta flight. And you'll uh, have to go into beta flight and turn right. on the buzzer on a mode. Right. Yes. So the key thing is no siren. All right, so let's dig into this thing. This is the M2.5 X. This is not a stretch X, it's a normal X. Um, starting from the outside in, we have 1106 6500 kV motors. So now we got a little beefier of a motor and higher kV than the two inch version, which is great. Um, moving in from there, you got your F25 ESC, which is a 20 amp ESC 4-in-1. Um, 
it has the current sensor on the speed control now. So back in the original version, like you guys remember the videos and all that, the current sensor was on the connector. That is no more. Diatone did away with that. That way, if you guys want to change to an XT60, EC2, whatever you want to change it to, you can without losing the current sensor. So the current sensor is now on the speed control. Real quick, is it more accurate on the board or is it more accurate there or does it matter? It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, okay. Yeah. Going from the top of the stack, you got your VTX. It's a t uh, TBS Unify Pro V3. Um, so it has, you know, the 25, 50, 200, whatever. Um, up to 800 milliwatt, basically, VTX. And does it have the cap installed in these guys? Yes, this has the, uh, the VTX is on its own filtered board. So like the uh, bigger five inch one, it has a little filter board now with an extra cap on it, as well as the five volt. So the power, the five volt into the VTX is filtered, as well as the video line itself is filtered now. So, so they did a lot of filtering, so the video is very clear on these things. Gotcha. Cool. Um, again, that was something the original diatones people were complaining about, but they've Maybe. addressed that and fixed that issue. And the camera itself, this is a micro swift. So instead of a generic, uh, the sniper G1 or whatever camera they called it, um, a generic CCD camera, now it's a run cam micro swift with a 2.1 millimeter lens. So it's got a really nice field of view, great quality of the coloring and everything. You don't have to worry about that. So you already had a great camera out of the box. Moving on the flight controller, it's an F4. This is the Fury F4 V2. The V2 is an 8K gyro. It's not a 32K gyro, so it's an 8K. Gyro itself is probably a little easier to tune, a little more stable, but you do lose the 32K capability, but 99% of the people are not gonna notice anything there. Um, the speed control is D-Shot 600, so you can't really even use D-Shot 1200 or anything like that. Um, That's it, not a bad thing, right? No, it does have a header pin now too, and you'll see the little connector down in there. Um, see a little floating connector? That's yeah. for the buzzer board. It comes with a separate little board that you can mount a buzzer on it. If you don't want to use the beacon um, on the motors for the ESC buzzer, you can put a separate buzzer on it too. So you have the ability to do either one with this. Mm -hmm. Diatone's done really good as far as they're keeping it between the two, two and a half and the three, the actual stack is all the same. The cameras are now starting to be the same. Uh, the only difference really is the frame and the motors. What so about the uh, R90, same flight stack? Same flight stack, but it doesn't have the CCD camera. Right. It does. It's right. still a generic camera. So you can go from the if you bought one of these components, you can go for all all three or four. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You can move everything around. Gotcha. So this way, this sucks. So as far as flying weight, this one's already got an XM uh, Plus installed. It's got a little lipo strap that I put on it and the props. So let's so just see what we got here. Okay. Right? 88.6 with everything you need other than the battery. So that's pretty good. Okay. And then let's. What does it measure? And. I'm gonna rely on you because the numbers are on your side. And you're in, yeah, it looks about one one fifteen. Yeah, the whole body. It's only what 75, 70 long. So it's really short. Um, so this is a, not a stretch check like the others. No, but it looks make, bigger. Like yeah, uh, make a stretch check. Basil yeah. mentioned earlier, it does look bigger with the uh, two and a half inch props versus a two inch because frame to frame, it doesn't look like it's that much bigger. But once you put the props on it, it does look like a bigger quad. Yeah. See here, it talks about the default tune is for three cell again. Um, so I haven't is, tried four cell on this one. I don't. Okay. It's four cell's not your fast not on your, three cell. Yeah. So real quick, it comes with the PIDs good enough to fly out of the box, right? So I think the yaw's a little low. Okay. Um, but, that's, but the average Joe could take it out of the box and have yeah, a real good time. Yeah, and I think they kind of detune them a little bit out of the box. You can get the updated PIDs on their site and everything. Link below. We we'll um, have a link to the same thing. But the uh, the PIDs that come out of it, I think, is more. It's probably a little detuned nowadays because they don't want people putting a four cell straight away on and burning things up. Because um, if it's aggressively tuned for three cell, you put four cell on it, you're going to burn something gotcha. up. So it's um, like in the middle of the road, so you can kind of yeah, get Yeah, it'll happy. get you going good, but I think right. the yaw is usually, in my experience, the last three or four, the yaw has been a little low on the P gain. Um, it's the biggest, notice, most noticeable thing right there. But other than that, it seems to be pretty good. Right, so the dilemma here, Will, is you on the two inch or the R90, wherever it is, you use the XM because of the size, and then the bigger ones you use the XM plus. So this guy being right in the middle, what do you? You wanna, can use either one. Either one. Um, so size is any any size different. But XM plus, plus will fit in there, right? That's yeah, yeah. The XM plus fits. You okay. can see it's right there. That's right. an XM plus installed. All right. So physically, it fits fine. That's yeah. There's there's no issues with the this metal cage frame. Doesn't have any issues fitting the receiver. Um, you could do, if you have Spectrum, the longbows fit in it, no problem. Okay. Um, or the, uh, the XM or XM Plus, depending on what radio you're using, will fit, no problem. Gotcha. Oh, RXSR right. will fit too, okay. yes. All right. All right, Will. So the million dollar question that I have, and I'm sure everybody else is going to have. So you have the R90, mm -hmm. the two inch, the two and a half, and the three. The three. Stretch X, normal, and plus. I guess those are different, but why 
and what do you think? Here are apples to oranges for us real quick. You gotta have them all, but I mean, <laughs> these are two inch, two and a half, and then a three. Between the ones, it's it's kind of hard, because they all are really good, but the three inch, this thing is a monster. I mean, these are huge motors on this size quad. Yeah, those you have to piece. kind of fly it like you fly a five inch quad. It's not something you can take out in a small, like the parking lot we have out front. Um, it's it, it wants to stretch its legs. I mean, it's really fast, the X and the plus frame. They're very, very fast. They're over hundred mile an hour. They're just little rocket ships. So they're really more for the larger space in a smaller package. I would say if you got five inch quads, you're flying them and maybe with the smaller form factor, people aren't like as hesitant to be around them. So if you want to get away with flying at parks and stuff like that, I think the three inch might be the better suit it there. Um, if you have big areas to fly, I think these are great. Um, the Another downside to it, it uses a weird size battery. That's that 800 to maybe thousand ish milliamp batteries. Four S? Four cell, yeah. yeah. Well, you can fly them on three cell too. I've flown right. it plenty of times on three cell. Uh, this, this likes the four S range, right? Yeah, it's really set up more for a four cell. Yeah. So. Let's jump to the R90. That was the original guy. Yeah, this is, this is the one that started the whole craze right here, the GTR90. Um, and there's lots now, and lots of threads. I was mistaken. They actually do not have the filter board on the R90. So it doesn't have that double filtering. It does have the capacitor on the power input, but it doesn't have the filter board for the VT. But he has also the cheapest one of the whole bunch. It is. The it is cheaper. Least expensive. Let's say um, least expensive. I like the GTR90. I actually think I prefer the GTR90 over the M2. The M2 is a little heavy to me. Um, I would think, but the two and a half inch definitely has more grunt to it. So are the motors the same between the two and the two and No, a half? these are 1104, okay. these are 1106. So that's huge. So you're really gaining nothing in terms of weight from one to the other, but you're getting yeah, tons of motor. You're getting more torque, initial torque, it's got more strength, and you can swing a bigger prop. So you have more lift area, so your power to weight ratio should is, go so up. So the power weight ratio is way higher in this guy. Yeah, this so if you do higher. want to carry, like if you want to get one of these little micro HD cameras that they sell all over the place now, and you want to fly it on one of these little quads, get the two and a half inch. Don't bother with the two inch. It just doesn't feel like it has the grunt to do it. Um, whereas the two and a half inch, uh, it, it has plenty of power, I think, on tap to, to carry gotcha. it. I've actually camera. seen a video, our customers actually had a GoPro session for. Yeah, and it could probably carry it. It flew it around, but it wasn't very. Yeah, I don't think it would fly that great, but yeah. it has it's the fluid, power to carry right. it. It's yeah. fluid. You could probably go through playgrounds and stuff like that. So The two and a half inch, it just looks right. I don't know. Maybe it's just, just looks kind of goofy on this it's frame. It's so small and short. Because and it's, yeah, it's so stumpy. Yeah. Uh, this one just, this thing looks mean. This looks like a scaled down big quad. Cool. That kind of sums it up. Right off the rip, you can just tell it's got a lot more get up and go. Wow, thing's screaming. That thing's, wow, that thing is screaming. Definitely has a ton more authority. What, uh, what, 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 what do you call it? What battery? Battery? Uh, three this cell? is a three cell Eosheen 550 that I had right, laying around. Old, older battery. Yeah, it's from my Lizard 95. So that, it's about a six, you can see the year old, huh? voltage dropping pretty good wow that was a good crash there yeah i mean i put it all the way through the tree that one came from about halfway up and fell down and hit every what's the expression you look like he came fell out of the ugly tree and hit every branch the way down <laughs> nah, this thing's beautiful what are you talking about no um let's see anything how the motors feel the motors they're pretty hot and it's about 95 degrees oh yeah they are pretty hot yeah, I couldn't keep my hands on there. Too That's long. why I wouldn't go four so with this out yeah. of the box. So they're Not so hot, long. I cannot keep my hands on them for more than a few seconds. It's, they're definitely going to give you a, a burn or some kind of a blister yeah. if you hold on to it. Four, but the battery. Three. The battery hot? Hmm. <laughs> I think the battery's hotter than the motors. <laughs> yeah, the battery's very hot. And it's also freaking. Uh, it's also like 150 degrees out here with about 100% humidity. So. Um, I think it really is 90 something. It, it's very hot today. But you know what? There's no rain. Yeah, for once. Right. So it's either hot or rain. But it's peeking through right there. All right, back for take two. Now we have a um, two cell, two cell battery, right? Yep. And uh, we had to take a little break. Yeah, uh, we had to go to Panda Express because I was getting grumpy because I was so, hungry. Somebody gets cranky over here if he doesn't. Very eat. cranky. So, anyways, while we were out eating, we uh, talked about putting a two cell on. We're gonna try that stock props. Yeah, exactly the same stuff. The only thing I did was put a two cell on it. I wanted to see what it'd do. And we're, when, since we have all those props inside and we talk about, preach about prop changes, we're not going to change props, right? Not on this one. No, okay. Ooh, I, I just hit I the just pole. Heard, I just hit the oh, light pole. Man. Oh, wow, and you bounced back. Yeah, I so, Oh my gosh. Lukewarm at best. <laughs> I mean, I could think they get hotter sitting in the sun. Okay, so that being said, ooh. Is that where you crashed it? 
Well, I actually uh, ripped the antenna. So when I crashed, the prop actually struck my power leads. So I actually cut through my battery lead a little bit. I should have strapped that down better. I shouldn't have done better on that. Um, yeah, the best of us. Did not bend a prop though. Um, the vibration you That reading. I can tell. It had to. Well, be. yeah, no, one's a little bit. All right, so what's your uh, uh, conclusion the on the The way this just flew on two cell, uh, yeah, two cell, three cell, this is the best one for the money. All right, so we just get back inside from a 95 degree day in Atlanta. So did next some flying, did some crashing. Next time we complain about it being cold, let's remember this video today. So what do you think? I like the 2.5. Yes. Uh, I think overall this is probably going to be my go-to. In fact, uh, right. you can add the 2 in. Oh, yeah. I get, <laughs> I get I the, didn't give you the I camera. I get the leftover. How did you, your, I know you said it before, but after you just fly, what's fresh? What's fresh it just that? has tons of power behind it. Mm -hmm but it's still small. The three inch is not fun to fly out there. Right. Whereas this is still, it still flies like a two inch, but it has the extra power on tap. I was nowhere near in the throttle gotcha. like I was on the two. There it is. There is the word of Will, why he likes the two inch 2.5 over. It's the Swiss army knife of quads right, right now. It's the most versatile. Okay. Um, it ha it can do more than the other ones can. So I think this is a great quad. Right. I, I'm very impressed with the power to weight ratio on it. So there it is. Let you let us let us know what you think. Let us know what you one you have, and let us know what you like better. The two, two and a half, um, three inches a different class. So we'll kind of keep that on this one. And uh, until next time, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below what you think.